I'll sing with you and Hansel and Gretel if you'd like. Well, good morning, one and all. Welcome. I'm glad you accepted this invitation to our birthday party. Well, not our birthday party, but it is Pentecost. 
Today we celebrate the birthday of the Church of Jesus Christ. I welcome you folks who worship here in person and all you folks who are following us on Facebook. Welcome in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us put out of our heads anything from this world that will distract us from celebrating the birth of the church. Let us worship God together. I greet you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And remember as we gather that our only help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth, grace to you all in peace from God the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us join together in our prayer for the day. O oh God, who in smoke and fire upon Mount Sinai gave the old law to Moses, and who this day revealed the new covenant in the fire of the Spirit, grant, we pray, that kindled by that same Spirit, which you wondrously poured forth upon your apostles, we may receive with joy your commandment of love. We ask this through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our hymn is number five. Let us stand if you are able. Our psalm today, we have King David. King David pleading with God, saying, O oh God, create in me a clean heart. And like David, despite our best efforts, no, we're not pure. So it is good that as we approach God here in this place, we unburden ourselves of sin with that same request. God created me a clean heart. 
In that spirit, let us join together in our prayer of confession. Almighty God, you poured your spirit upon gathered disciples, creating bold tongues, open ears, and a new community of faith. We confess that we hold back the force of your spirit among us. We do not listen for your word of grace, speak the good news of your love, or live as a people made one in Christ. Have mercy on us, O God. Transform our timid lives by the power of your Spirit and fill us with a flaming desire to be your faithful people, doing your will for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us take 30 seconds, each of us with the Holy Spirit, to be guided with our own private confession. O oh God, for all we confess out loud, for those things we confess silently to you, Lord, have mercy upon us. Hear these words of assurance. Peter, full of the Holy Spirit, stood in Jerusalem in front of all those travelers from other places who were in awe of the Holy Spirit. They asked him, they asked him as he was speaking, what do we need to do to be saved? His answer, believe in Jesus Christ. So those of us who believe in Christ the Lord, who know he is God who must be obeyed, we don't get it perfectly. But his blood covers all our sin. Let us rejoice, let us be glad. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen.
Now, our first scripture reading is Psalm number 51. It is a psalm of David. You folks, please read along with Mary on the people part. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. For I know my transgressions, my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. You desire truth in my inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, I shall be clean. Wash me, I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my Create in me a clean heart, O God. Put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways. Sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips. My mouth will declare your praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. Do good to Zion in your good pleasure. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in right sacrifices, in burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. Second reading, beginning our whole new series, 14 parts. Thematic, biblical, wise wisdom. Words that help us live good lives. We start today, Pentecost. We'll continue with this theme through Labor Day. Hear the words of the Lord written by Solomon, son of David, king of Israel. For learning about wisdom and instruction... For understanding words of insight. For gaining instruction in wise dealing, righteousness, justice, equity. To teach shrewdness to the simple, knowledge and prudence to the young. Let the wise also hear and gain in learning, and the discerning acquire skill. To understand a proverb and a figure, the words of the wise and their riddles. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Hear, my child, your father's instruction. Do not reject your mother's teaching. For they are a fair garland for your head, pendants for your neck. My child, if sinners entice you, do not consent. 
If they say, come with us, let us lie, wait for blood, let us wantonly ambush the innocent, like Sheol, let us swallow them alive and whole, like those who go down to the pit, we shall find all kinds of costly things. We shall fill our houses with booty. Throw in your lot among us. We will all have one purse. My child, do not walk that way. Keep your foot from their paths. Their feet run to evil. They hurry to shed blood. For in vain is the net baited while the bird is looking on. They lie in wait to kill themselves. Set an ambush for their own lives. Such is the end of all who are greedy for gain. It takes away the life of its possessors. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. God. And our hymn is number 460. Please stand if you are able. Please join me in our prayer for illumination. Loving God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to us who have gone astray from your ways, and bring us again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word. Jesus Christ, our Lord, guide us now by your Holy Spirit that through the words of scripture and sermon, we might be led to him, who alone is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Pick your companions carefully. Did mom tell us that? Did mom always watch who you were hanging out with? It was a lot easier in the old neighborhoods where there were three generations of people in one block. You knew the grandmothers. You knew the children. You knew the grandchildren. Because like it or not, we can begin imitating those people we hang around with. Got to watch out. 
even though we are filled with the Holy Spirit as disciples of Jesus Christ, it's easy. It's easy to listen to other voices that the world gives. It's not just the voice of Christ's wisdom that we hear in the streets. No, 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 no. There's a ton of other voices. And there are times, there are times we listen to those other voices. When we don't live up to the callings, we can live. We forget to be. We forget to be the people that we're made to be. Well, what am I talking about? Well, lately I'm talking about, I'm horrified once again. The Southern Baptist Convention put out their list of people, ministers, church leaders, who crossed the line with individual people and committed abuse. Now, I'm less concerned about that than I am about their cover-up of those things. They created a church culture which said, we've got to protect our church at all costs. we got to cover these scandals up, sweep them under the rug. No. The beginning of the wisdom is fear of the Lord. Not fear of what other people will think. Not fear. Not fear of a press leak saying what's going on. No, it's fear of the Lord. And the Lord is a God of justice. That was their job, to do justice for the victims. To investigate, to check out, to take appropriate action. But pretty soon, pretty soon from all I've read, there was a group of top leaders who acted like rascals. Like those people that Proverbs talked about, whose goal was to preserve the institution and not do justice and just like Nixon and Watergate, the cover-up is worse than the crime. They didn't listen to the Holy Spirit guiding them to the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If we begin to fear what the neighbors think, if we begin to fear for the future of a specific institution, we've forgotten to fear and be obedient to the Lord first. We can become those rascals that Proverbs talks about, and that's no way to honor the church we love. On this, the birthday party for the church. Ah, Southern Baptist, it's difficult. What about Hillsong a few months ago? Hillsong Church. How many franchises did they have worldwide? Dozens at least. They worshipped celebrity. Their pastors literally were celebrities. An insider said that one reason the pastors were picked were for their good looks. And their athletic builds. They built a church of celebrities. And get this. All their pastors were driven to the church for Sunday sermon in a limousine. That's something I've never heard talked about at any consistory I've ever been a part of. And I'm glad. The voices they followed 
were voices of celebrity. The pastor has to be a celebrity. We want to attract celebrities. If we don't have enough celebrities in the first few rows, there's something wrong. Literally, Hillsong churches had front rows reserved in case a celebrity came to worship, they were quickly put up there. And they claimed to be honoring the Lord Jesus Christ who said to his disciples, it's better for you to sit in the back of a banquet. Perhaps you'll be invited up front, but you sit in the back. For the last will be first and first will be last. What voice are they listening to? The celebrity voice of American culture? Or the voice of the Proverbs, the voice of King David, the voice of the Holy Spirit that says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and be careful with whom you hang out with. You could become imitating them. And then the message of the church can get deluded, perhaps even get lost. One of the survivors from Hillsong who had been sexually abused, she went. She went to the man who she claimed abused her, to his superior. She reported this the next day. He asked if she was exaggerating, and she said, no, I'm not exaggerating. This is what happened. I know what happened. He said to her, you're probably right, but we need to keep this quiet. It might hurt the church if word gets out. A rascal. That's a rascal who's listening to these voices in Proverbs. He's not listening to the voice of Jesus who said, if you hurt one child, it will be better for you to have a millstone around your neck and thrown into the ocean. That's the voice of Jesus. But these folks... We're following the voice of the celebrity, the voices of the world. It's sad. The church does damage to the reputation of Jesus whenever it does not listen to the voice of God's wisdom, whenever it is not guided by the Holy Spirit, whenever it is guided by some other voice, whenever it is guided by a voice or motive of the world. Every Wednesday, I sit on Zoom with a group that Pam put together. This is one of the programs endorsed by our consistory, My Sanctuary Healing. And in that group, people who have been hurt by the church come for healing. It's, it's a rather wonderful group to be a part of. One of the people who's a part of that is from a Korean Methodist background. And he describes in many Korean Methodist churches the Korean elders are often rather well off. They run their own businesses, very astute at business. But they insist that pastors should not be paid much because of what Confucius said about money that it's better to be poor. So here you have Korean 
Christians listening not to the Holy Spirit, not to God's wisdom, but you've got them listening to the voice of Confucius. They want their ministers to live like monks in poverty while these Korean businessmen live rather luxurious lives. The result this man was sharing with the group is there is a lot of depression among Korean ministers. And abuse comes from that too. So many of these ministers feel abused, they need to pass it along, the trickle-down theory. And they'll abuse other people. A sick little system they've got going. The church is listening to the voice of Confucius, not to the voice of Scripture that says the laborer is owed his wage. And the book of Leviticus, you shall not deprive a borrowed ox of a feed bag. If we listen to the voice that says, preserve the institution at all costs, we're ignoring Jesus. If we listen to the voice that says, Confucius, He's the one we need to listen to. Well, we're getting in with the wrong crowd if we're more worried about preserving an institution rather than preserving and living up to what the Lord Jesus commanded, what the Holy Spirit is telling us in our hearts. We've missed the boat. We're not, we're not kindling that Holy Spirit from us. We're not living up to those words in the psalmist, in the Proverbs. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If we get guided by other voices, we're going to come to a bad end. We're going to burn out. It's not going to end well if we do the right thing. If we listen to Jesus first with good awe and good respect, we'll make the right decisions. And longevity will be the key. Which voice which voice do we listen to? It's not easy taking time in a day for personal study of Scripture. It's not easy to carve up a time for our personal prayer time. Things that we see visibly can distract us. They can seem more important and in our economy, a lot of us are working more hours than we ever have before. People are having to work two shifts just to survive, and that's barely survive. It's not easy. And there are temptations to stray and take shortcuts. If we pay attention to the spirit within us, if we pay attention to the fruit of the Spirit, pray constantly, sing songs of praise. No, I do that, but no, don't worry, not out loud. I do that in my own head. Then we'll be around good companions. We won't listen to those other voices of the world. And our longevity our blessing from the Lord will be our reward. Yeah, it looks tempting sometimes to cut corners. I was once told by an accountant up in Albany who went to another Reformed church, he said, what are you doing? 
you're being too honest with your taxes. How can you be too honest with your taxes? Say you're paying too much. You know, you can skimp a little here and skimp a little there and skimp a little somewhere else. The man was a professing Christian. Listening to the voice of the world. That the end justifies the means. That it's not as important to be as honest as Jesus requires from us. Yeah, the man died fairly early. Yep. He got into a different lifestyle than an honest Christian lifestyle. Maybe he felt guilty for some of the things he did, but he lived a country club life. He died young. So it is the words of God through Solomon. Fear the Lord. That's the beginning of wisdom. The words of Pentecost. Follow that spirit that is within us. Read scripture. Pray. Feel that spirit as a guide that we may not sin against God. And we'll get our reward. Folks who follow those other voices, they build their own trap that they will themselves will fall into. Let's be wise and spirit-filled Christians, avoiding those other voices. And the whole world will know we are Christ's disciples because we will reflect his light. So may it be from this day forward for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand with me as we affirm our faith with the Apostles' Creed. Stand if you are able. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. For thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. A few announcements upcoming. Please remember we're holding a birthday picnic for the church at the Parsonage after worship service. You'll probably get there before I do. If you're going, please grab a seat in the backyard. We'll have some snackies out until we get the grill fired up. We got a wonderful menu. We got noodle salad. We got potato salad. Ah, uh, chicken burgers, uh, turkey burgers, beef burgers, sausage and peppers, hot dogs, baked beans. Please come, eat, have a good time. It's going to be fun. It'll take us a few minutes to set up, munch on some crackers in the backyard, talk to the squirrel until we get the grill fired up and everything all set. 
We do need your prayers this week. General Synod starts on June 9th. That's always a wing ding. You never know quite what our delegates are going to do with General Synod. They certainly need prayers for guidance. So please pray for General Synod every day this week on June 9th. What do we have? June 26th is our anniversary Sunday. Anniversary of this particular congregation. We're going to have an especially wondrous party for that. We're going to be dedicating a plaque in the Fewer's memory. For it was the Fewer's, um, Fewer's estate that allowed us to do all these new renovations. We'll be doing that. And we're going to have sub-sandwich lunches downstairs. So please mark that on your calendars, June 26th. And for you folks who are worshiping online, in a few minutes we will be holding Holy Communion. If you have not already done so, please get yourself some communion elements so you can worship and have communion with us today. Any other announcements? Anything I'm missing? No. Oh, please, in your prayers also, ask yourself, what is God calling me to contribute financially to this church? It costs a lot of money to do all that we do. Please, while we hear our offertory, say, God, am I giving enough? What do you require of me? And listen for the answer. Oh God, we bring ourselves, we bring our offerings to your throne. Bless them and purify them. May they be worthy of you. Use them to grow your kingdom here, to glorify your name. In Jesus' own name we pray. Amen. Please be seated as we prepare for this, the sacrament of Holy Communion on this wonderful Pentecost Day. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Beloved in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Supper which we are about to celebrate is a feast of remembrance of communion, 
of hope. We come remembering that our Lord Jesus Christ perfectly fulfilled the law, even to death on the cross. Because of God's eternal covenant of grace, we are accepted, and we will never be forsaken. We come to commune with this same Christ who is promised to be with us always. Christ is the true bread which nourishes us, the vine in whom we must live if we are to bear fruit. The Holy Spirit unites us into one body and in communion with all the saints. So we receive this supper in Christ's love and our affections for one another. We come in hope, believing that as surely as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we will be raised from the dead into eternal life. This is the Lord's table. Come, for all things are now ready. I ask you to join me in our communion prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy and right it is in our joyful duty to give thanks to you at all times and in all places. O Lord, our creator, almighty and everlasting God, you created heaven with all its hosts, the earth with all its plenty. You have given us life and being and preserve us by your providence. You have shown us the fullness of your love in sending into the world your Son, Jesus Christ, the eternal Word, made flesh for us and for our salvation. For the precious gift of this mighty Savior, who has reconciled us to you, we praise and bless you, O God. With your whole church on earth, with all the company of heaven, we worship and adore your glorious name. Please sing with me. The Lord Jesus, the same night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when they had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For our bread, we do have gluten-free. If you need gluten-free, they are in the packet on the bread table. The Lord Jesus, hear this again, took bread and broke it, gave it to his disciples, all of you, he said, eat this. This is my body, broken for you.
The bread which we break is the communion of the body of Christ. And after supper, Jesus took a cup and he gave thanks for it. He blessed it. He gave it to his same disciples. All of you, he said, drink this. This is the new covenant in my blood for the forgiveness of all your sins. Do this every time you eat and drink in remembrance of me. The cup of blessing which we bless is the communion of the blood of Christ. <coughs> In our prayers this week, let us continue to pray for Voldemir and Dimitro. For Juetta and Terry, although Terry's improving a lot. She said thanks for the prayers. I got to see her this week. A little bit more prayer. We ought to see her back in here with us. Gloria and Chris, of course, Andy continues his treatments. How's Carla and Mary? Anything up? All right, we'll keep up our prayers for Carleen. And of course, keep praying for General Synod. This week, you never know what to expect from a General Synod. They're always unique. Any prayer requests I'm missing? Anything? Friend's mom. Yes, I forgot her name. Spell. 
Norges, a friend's mom. We sent out that um, prayer request Thursday evening, so please continue to pray for Norges as well. Let's pray together. Thank you, God, for this congregation. Thank you for your whole church on earth on this church birthday. We ask that you continue to fill us with your spirit. Give us dreams and give us visions that we might live into the calling we have received. May we do well by you and be joyful in doing it. May we never get complacent and look back at our history so much we don't walk into the future. Guide us, O oh thou great Jehovah, as we go through this land. We are your church. And we in faith make our prayers to you, trusting that you hear them and your will will be done. Protect Voldemir, protect Dimitro, we pray, as they fight on behalf of Ukraine. We pray that you will soften Putin's heart. May he not continue this evil but bring his troops back home. Until then, may all governments in the world work well in support of Ukraine, the settlement of refugees, and the binding up of wounds that have been suffered. We continue to pray for Cherry and Juetta, these matriarchs of their families who need your strength and spirit each and every day. Give them the strength each day that they require, that they may hold these families together. We pray for Juetta's daughters. May they soon be well. Glory undergoes rehab and Chris is still fighting infection. We pray your spirit upon this mother and son. May they each be healed. And as Gloria's mind diminishes, may she still know your presence, your joy, your peace. We pray for Andy as he goes through his cancer treatments. We pray this cancer will be eliminated from his body. May he get full health and energy once more. Pray for Carlene that she will continue to recover Likewise, we pray for Nargis as she is starting their recovery process. Give skill to those who care for these ladies. More than that, may they know your presence. Touch them with your healing hand, we pray. Be a blessing to all our delegates at General Synod this year. May they act like Christians. May they have the wisdom to tame their tongues. May they love you more than all else. May it be a model of Christianity, we pray. And bless us this afternoon as we picnic together. May your spirit abide with us. May your full joy, peace, and hospitality be among us. For these and all things, we pray in one name, Jesus' name, remembering what he taught us. 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. Our hymn is number 231. Please stand if you are able. Happy birthday, church. Let's today thank God for his spirit. May we ask for God's joy and God's peace. May we ask on our journey that we do justice, love righteousness, walk humbly with our God. Be blessed in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 